Welcome, Samadhi community. Welcome to the second Dharma talk with me, Sushma. Um, so today's Dharma talk is about mythology. So let's start by defining mythology. Why do we use mythology when we talk about yoga? So mythology is the study of myths, but what are myths? So if you think about facts, uh, something that we all agree on. Right? We all get hungry, we all feel fear. Um, you know, these are some things that we all get happy, we all get sad, like these are the truths that we all agree on. And then there are there is fiction, which is, um, let's say, Harry Potter, we all know that it is fiction. And, but somewhere in between the fact and fiction is mythology mythology is someone's truth. It's not everyone's truth, but it is someone's truth. So it's not fiction, but it's also not a fact. Um, every culture in the world tries to understand itself and they come up with mythology so that they can pass this um, wisdom, these stories, these rituals, so that we know who we are. We get to understand ourselves better. So science can tell you how you were born or how things happen, but mythology tells you why you were born. Why do you have these parents? What will happen when you die? So every culture comes up with its own mythology to understand themselves better. So when we talk about yoga and yogic mythology, we talk about the three main energies. Now remember yoga is a mystical arm. It's a mystical practice. So these energies are not out there. We hold these energies within us. So the very first energy that we talk about is the energy of creation, Brahma. Brahma creates everything. Uh, preservance is Vishnu. Everything has a life. So you are born, then you have a life. And then that's Vishnu and uh, the third one is Shiva which represents destruction or death or end of something so the idea is that the cycle keeps going you are born you live your life and then you die and then according to the Indian mythology the Hindu mythology the cycle keeps going you're you die and you're born again so um, when we talk about Dharma. Dharma is uh, suppressing your animal nature so that you can connect with your highest consciousness, um, connecting your highest consciousness through social interaction. So what that means is uh, if you think about the law of jungle, the law of jungle is survival of the fittest. But as humans, we can override or reject that law and we can help people who are in need, or not just people, anyone who needs us. So, and this is represented in the very first story of Vishnu, where he shows up as a fish. One day, Manu, who's the first human, is taking a bath in a river, and this tiny fish comes up to him and says, can you please help me out? Can you please save me? This big fish is trying to eat me up. And Manu picks up that little fish and puts it in a bowl of water. The next day, the fish has outgrown that bowl. So he moves him, moves it into a bigger pot and then a bigger pot, then into the pond, the lake, the river, and eventually the ocean. Um, and now at this point, the fish is so big that it is, it needs an ocean to fit in. And Manu, uh, says, this is it, I cannot help you anymore. So the fish says, you know, tomorrow there's going to be a huge flood. And that's one thing that's common across so many cultures. Every mythology talks about this big flood that happened. And similarly in this story, the fish tells Manu about this big flood and tells him to build a boat where he can hold everyone in. So the cycle goes, Manu helps the fish, but in the end, the fish helps Manu. So that's the first story where dharma was talked about. 
there you let go of that animal instinct of pushing down people who are weaker than you in rising up. But you practice dharma by helping everyone that needs your help. So there is a story for that too. Every, um, there is the story of a king who plundered the earth and, um, and the earth, the spirit of the earth was so injured and so wounded that it just runs away and takes a form of a cow. And when the spirit of the earth runs away, everything starts dying. The trees don't want, are not bearing any fruits. The crops are not growing. The animals are not living. So this king gets really worried. He realizes his mistake and starts searching for the spirit of the earth. He finds her and he says, can you please come back? The spirit is still very upset. And then he said, but what am I supposed to do? my people can live if I domesticate the animals, if I harvest crops, if I tame the jungles, make fields out of them. How else am I supposed to survive? And the spirit of the earth says in moderation, think about the dharma, there should be a balance between nature and humans. And think of it like a bow, it should the thread or the, on the, the string on the bow should not be so tight that it snaps and it should not be so loose that you cannot even use the bow. Find that balance and a bow is used as a symbol for dharma where there is balance between humans and nature. Um, when we talk about dharma, we talk about this epic that was written 7,500 years ago. It's called the Ramayana. And this again describes the different situations, the nuances of practicing dharma. So as the story goes, Rama was a prince who was about to be crowned king. And right when that's about to happen, his stepmother comes forward and says, I want him to be exiled into the forest for 14 years and I want my son to be crowned the next king. So in that days, so yogic mythology has divided every period um, of time into certain sections and at that time the dharma was that you respect or you, uh, you, you obey your father. So the father for the greater good, so the father has to keep his word and Ram says, okay, I will leave for the exile. I'll go into the forest. So here's the thing about the forest. A lot of stories talk about, when we talk about the Mahabharata, the brothers are sent into the forest. The forest is a place where no one knows you. So if you are a king or a prince of a kingdom, people know you. There's, they behave a certain way with you. There is a certain, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there's a certain behavior that people will have because you are the prince or you are the king. But when you go into the forest, you are losing that identity. No one knows you. No one is going to treat you any different than anyone else in the forest. So exile, going into the forest rep represents letting go of that identity. So Ram moves into the forest in the story with his wife and his younger brother. And then his wife gets abducted by the demon king who lives in Sri Lanka, which is the southern part of India. Ram is from the northern part of India. So, so again, there's some symbolic meaning here. Ram is from the north, which represents yoga as a mystical process, which represents our upper uh, chakras or upper spirit, our spirituality. So the top three chakras are about our emotional system, how we deal with the world, our spirituality. So Ram represents that. The demon king is in the south and he has acted upon his impulses, his emotions, his ego, and he has abducted his uh, abducted Sita, Ram's wife. So there is that 
symbolic meaning. So uh, it's it's not a very uh, it's a very sad story um, of Ram because he faces one mishap after the other. Things go keep going wrong. So he meets he sees that Sita is abducted, and he starts walking in the general direction of where he thinks that she went. And he meets this other king on his journey. He's a monkey king. And he realizes that he has, this king, Bali, has kicked out his own brother. So again, now he has to follow his dharma here. For his own personal gain, he should be going to the king and saying, let's form an alliance and rescue my wife. But instead of that, he helps the brother out. The brother who has been wrongfully kicked out of the kingdom, he goes to him, helps him out instead of looking at his personal gain. So the idea is that no matter what the situation, looking at the bigger good, helping out people who are in need instead of going after your personal gains. So Ram helps out this, uh, his, uh, this brother and then again, he finds his best friend Hanuman there. We all have done Hanuman Asana or Anjanaya Asana in our practice. And Hanuman represents faith. He, he has a short term memory loss. He cannot remember things, but he keeps repeating Ram. He, he looks into the contents of his heart and has faith. Um, so Hanuman represents that energy when things are not going right, you have faith that everything will be okay. And not feeding into fear because they say fear can create, fear and doubt can create mountains, whereas faith can move them. So, um, so as the journey continues, he goes to, he defeats this King Ravna and brings Sita back, his wife back, and he goes back to his own kingdom. But following the dharma all the time, doing the right thing, uh, does not mean things will go, always go how you want them to go. So what happens is when Ram returns from the forest with his wife, there is a washerman who says, how can you accept your wife? She lived in a foreign country with some other man for so many months. How can you just accept her back? So here, Ram has to pick, is he going to do the dharma of a king and listen to his subjects? Or does he pick his dharma, or his dharma as a husband and takes care of his wife? Ramayana is the story of a king, not of a husband. So Ram does what a king should do, and he tells Sita to, to make the story short, Sita leaves after this incident. And Ram takes over the kingdom, and he makes a statue of gold, uh, which represents the Gold is considered the purest of all metals, so he, he makes his opinion heard by doing that. But because Sita was wronged, uh, Dharma moves away from Ram. As the story goes, he loses his kingdom and, uh, and Sita gives birth to twin boys who, who capture a horse that, um, that Ram has He's doing this ceremony where he lets go of a horse, wherever the horse runs, uh, it, that land is his, but then the kids, his kids, his own kids that he's not aware of catch the horse. Um, so, but the idea of the story is dharma, follow your dharma, do the right thing, take care of people who need your help, put your personal uh, reasons second look at the greater good maintain that balance and again it does not matter what land what things are handed to us as we live our life what matters is how we deal with them do we get carried by emotions do we get carried by fear 
or do we stay and look at the bigger good, look at the bigger picture and follow our own dharma. Thank you so much. Namaste.